Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. These are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of the morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming 
from the rain on grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to proper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand to touch them one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in the fire on the spot. Here endeth the reading of the scripture. A reading from the Revelation of John. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us, 
and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming from the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So, you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ the King Sunday, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is always one of my cherished Sundays, and a Sunday that the church uh, also cherishes. It's Christ the King Sunday. This is the last Sunday of our church year, and we crown the year by literally crowning Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, and it's an opportunity for us to reflect a little bit on what does it mean for us to uh, proclaim Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords? And what is the kingdom of God uh, and its claim on us all about? So to enter into that conversation with you today, um, I wanna start by just commenting on the collect of the day, which I don't often uh, do during preaching time. But as you know, each Sunday in our church year, we have a collect, a prayer that collects a thought and sometimes accentuates uh, the theme of today. And today's collect um, really does that well. Uh, and the collect says, Almighty and everlasting God, and here we're gonna hear about what being King of Kings uh, and Lord of Lords, what's, that, what's this all about? Um, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, isn't this the truth, um, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule. That's God's plan, uh, to free us from the enslavement of self-focus, of ego, of self selfishness, and to restore us into the community that God always intended us to live in the community of love centered around God and God's love in Christ. That's God's promise 
and God's plan. So how does that all happen? And what's that all about? Well, to get into it with you, I want to talk about politics. First century politics, not 21st century politics. Yeah, in, in today's gospel, we have a really intense political moment. We've got Pilate, who is the representative of the Roman Emperor Augustus. Uh, he is the representative of the world's power, the empire of Rome in all its dominion and earthly glory. And there's Pilate, the embodiment of that empire, confronting Jesus. And Pilate, as politicians are wont to think, are concerned with, you know, who's got the power? Who's got the control? Who's got the authority? Uh, and so he, he starts by saying to Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? In other words, are you the one who dares to maybe challenge and threat the power and dominion of Rome? Are you the king of the Jews? Now, Jesus being the good rabbi that he is, rabbis never answer questions. They just answer with more questions. So, in a maddeningly fashion, he says to Pilate, uh, did someone tell you about that, or, or do you know it on your own? Question mark. <laughs> you know, and he just totally throws, and then Pilate goes, you know, I'm not a Jew, you know, don't try, don't try any of those rabbi tricks on me, the Jedi rab rabbi mind tricks, you know. Uh, you know, your own people have handed you over to me. Um, you know, what have you done? And Jesus responds by saying, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not kingdom and kingship the way you think about it. My kingdom's not of this world. You know, if it were so, I'd have followers, you know, gathering to, to take up arms and release me. No, my kingdom is not of this world. And um, Pilate says, oh, so, and now he latches onto it. Oh, so you are a king. You know, now I can pin you down. You're, you're claiming. And Jesus says, well, so you say. But here's what I'm all about. Uh, I'm all about bearing witness to truth. And those who want to root their lives in truth, listen to my voice. And then today's confrontation, at least as we have it, ends. So what is the kingdom of God all about? And how does it happen? What does it mean for us? Let me first begin by saying that as Christians, as followers of Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we're reminded that our ultimate allegiance, our ultimate loyalty, our ultimate obedience, is to Jesus. That's what it means to be part and, and citizens of the kingdom of God. And I've, I know I've taught you this before, but I'll teach you it again. The word obedience, it's not about a lockstep conformity. It's not about a coerced kind of force enforcement. Obedience at its root means to listen closely, because what we hear is life-giving. And so to be loyal, have allegiance to, and obedient to Jesus is about tuning our hearts, as one of the old hymns say, to the voice and heart of Jesus. Now, what is the kingdom of God all about? What Pilate never would be able to understand is about God's kingdom is not found on any earthly map. 
The kingdom of God instead is located in the human heart. Um, that's where the kingdom appears. It's where it's cultivated and where it's embraced. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. And so to be part and citizens of the kingdom of God is to align our hearts intentionally with God's heart to seek and conform our life, our words, our actions to the movement and prompting and presence of the spirit within us and to let that grow and deepen and let the world see this is the truth. Now, how does that, how does that cultivating and alignment and attunement with, with God's kingdom and presence within start happening for us? Uh, let, me, let me reflect with that, about that for a moment with you. I think it begins with humility. Um, I think about Jesus himself in uh, his approach to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday when everyone was, you know, sort of waving branches and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David, declaring him, as it were, king. Um, how did he come? He was seated on the donkey. You know, not the, the large white charger. You know, not brandishing a sword and gleaming armor. Uh, the way kings would have done it in that day. No, he came humbly, seated on a donkey. You know, humility is about draining ourselves of our ego and our self-inflated notion of ourselves, our self-focus. It's about emptying. It's, it's, it's a spiritual kenosis, an emptying uh, of that and allowing then the space and vulnerability for our lives to then start getting in sync with God's life. Jesus teaches us this in the Lord's Prayer when he keeps asking us to pray not, you know, you know thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know, not my will, not my ways, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. It takes humility to, to sort of say, God, I want to be an instrument and means by which your will, your life, your kingdom comes. So it starts with humility. And it continues with love. God's kingdom is a kingdom of love. And what that means for me is that it's about self-giving and not control. It's about servanthood, not domination. Jesus, in all his glory, the church says, is seen most clearly on the cross. It's why the cross is the symbol for us of the Christian life. It's a moment of vulnerability, self-giving, and letting go of any pretensions. And in that glorious moment, the act of total self-giving of love, the world is forgiven and freed of the power of selfishness, the power of sin. God's kingdom is about that rule of love, ruling in our hearts, and reigning in the world. It's a kingdom where ju justice and mercy meet and embrace. Where mercy is strengthened by truth. And justice doesn't seek to punish, but to restore. And if you want a glimpse of, well, you know, what could that look like? You know, think about the truth and justice 
committee and reconciliation committee that Desmond Tutu, the Anglican bishop, started in South Africa. A, a country torn apart by a history of racism and violence. And what Desmond Tutu enabled to happen is truth to be told. Stories of violence and injustice were publicly told. And then justice and mercy were given. And what happened in this nation? Reconciliation began to happen. Not perfectly, we know that. But there was a path forward in which mercy and justice and restoration were happening. A glimpse of the kingdom. For me, this is what truth is all about. It's about listening to Jesus' voice, tuning our lives to this way of love, of mercy and justice, setting aside ego and control and domination. That's the power and politics of the world and aligning our hearts and lives with the way of God, the way of love, the way of truth, the way of Jesus. And finally on this Christ the King Sunday, last Sunday of the church year, we also have a little bit of a glimpse in our scriptures about Jesus' second coming. Something the church just doesn't talk about enough. So I'll just end today's sermon with a little bit of it, of the, of the second coming. You know, the promise of the second coming, as we say, as we will say in a moment in the creed, when Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead, you say it every Sunday, we proclaim it every Sunday, is the promise that in the end, the establishment of this reign of God, um, to use the language of the prophets, uh, where swords will be finally beat into plowshares and spe spears finally refashioned into puny hooks. Uh, this world where the knowledge and love of the Lord will rule the earth like the waters cover the seas, those stirring images. Finally, that will happen through the grace and power and coming of Christ who comes to set all things, living and the dead, all creation right. And it's why we as Christians lift that up, not out of fear, but out of hope and joy, saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. That's what we hope and pray for, that God's reign of love will finally fill and color and shape and transform every human heart, all creation, and finally Eden will be restored. And so on this Christ the King Sunday, it's these themes and hopes that are lifted up for us as we in our hearts sing and rejoice and proclaim Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the Church of God, that we may be filled with love, generosity, and truth, so to transform our hearts, communities, and our world through Jesus' love. May your transforming spirit guide us. For Joseph, our president, the leaders of our nation, and the leaders of all nations. May your transforming spirit give them compassion and good judgment and guide them in the ways of truth, justice, and peace. For all who hold authority in the church, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Sean, our bishop, our presiding bishop, and Peter, our bishop, that they may be faithful to you and humbly teach in your light. May your transforming <clears throat> spirit inspire them with creativity, renew them with energy, and fill them with wise leadership and a love for service. For blessings on all of our human endeavors, and for the just and proper use of the beauty and abundance of creation. May your spirit of transformation guide us in freeing your world from destruction, poverty, famine, and oppression. For the sick in body, mind, or spirit, including those on our prayer list, and for those we now name in our hearts. May your transforming spirit bring hope and healing to all who suffer. For all who have died and entered into joy. May, May your, your spirit, spirit of, of transformation, transformation shine perpetual light on, on all, all the saints, saints who have gone, who have gone before, before us. us. O oh God, God, in your in infinite, infinite generosity, generosity you, you have, have created, created a world with resources to sustain all of your children with abundance of food, work, and recreation. Transform us to humbly receive and joyfully share your bounty with others in service to the common good. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And on this day, we also lift up to you, Lord, everyone on our prayer list, remembering especially by name Walt, Julie, Sandy, Susan, Melissa, Connor, and Nina, and all those in any need or trouble. We remember Bob McKinney, Michael Spear, and Michael Masters, 
who are celebrating birthdays this week. We pray for our companion relationships with Andra Nuveri Church in Madagascar and with the people of Bon Samaritan Church and School in Bondo, Haiti. And I invite your additional prayers and thanksgivings. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant to us effectually to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace you all and welcome. A warm and loving welcome to all, a special welcome to any visitors or newcomers that we have with us today. We're delighted you're here. We welcome you warmly into our presence. Uh, we welcome our online worshipers as well. Great to be together on this glorious Sunday where the weather has turned this week and we're just rejoicing, at least I am, uh, in the cooler weather. It's wonderful. Great to see everybody. Um, s several announcements to highlight. One is that tonight uh, we observe and celebrate Even Song at 6 p.m., one of the glorious services in our church worship scheduling. Uh, the choir and Tim just uh, lead us in such a holy, reverent, and, and exquisitely beautiful time. So hope many can join me and the choir uh, and others for our Even Song tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, a word about stewardship. We had a really beautiful, I felt moving stewardship Sunday last week. And uh, this is a big thank you to all of you who turned in your pledge cards and made a financial commitment to the church. Uh, we're about 70% uh, to where we want to get. Um, and um, so let me speak to the 30% who haven't turned in a pledge card or made a commitment. Uh, please do so. The uh, vestry is meeting to uh, prepare the church budget for next year. Uh, and uh, we have some important work to do around that. But again, thank you to those uh, who participated uh, in that. Um, this week, Thanksgiving, of course, what a joyous time to celebrate uh, with family and friends and loved ones. We'll be celebrating with our uh, Thanksgiving service here at St. Gregory's Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, and we started this a couple years ago to allow people to enjoy the day on Thursday and be able to worship on Wednesday evening. So looking forward to that. See you then uh, for worship on 
Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Do keep the Meals with Meaning um, volunteers and team in your prayers. We're once again putting on uh, the community Thanksgiving for all of Boca. Uh, we're expecting over 200 folks. And we're also providing a meals uh, delivery service for anyone in the community, not just St. Gregory's, anyone in the community uh, who might need a Thanksgiving meal on this day. So let us know, call the church office, uh, and we'll be glad to add uh, those folks uh, to our list as well. Next week, for Sunday of Advent, glorious uh, experience of, uh, wait till you see the new blue frontal that we've got. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. It's, I, I just can't wait to, for you all to see it. Uh, and, and we'll light the candles, uh, or start the lighting of the candles. We're also, thank God, welcoming uh, Reverend Robin Neville as our new associate rector. Uh, after about four months of doing this solo for a while, with some able help, uh, from Father Emilio and Father Bruno and Elizabeth Panky Warren, very much so, and very grateful. Um, uh, it'll be great to have uh, an associate rector. Uh, Robin uh, and Damien have moved into the 298 house. In fact, this morning the U-Haul truck was still out there. I don't know if anyone saw it today, but uh, so they're set settling in. Uh, so that'll be her first Sunday. She'll be celebrating. Uh, and we're also having our annual open house at the parish home rectory. Uh, so uh, Anita is reminding me to remind you, please bring something to share if you're coming to the open house. We're expecting a big crowd uh, to welcome Robin. Uh, so looking forward to that. Then finally, um, tickets are still on sale for our Christmas holiday gala featuring Wycliffe Gordon uh, as our special guest musician. And uh, Tim Brumfield will tell us a little bit about Wycliffe. Tim. Good morning. Good morning. Well, if you don't have your ticket yet for December 7th, run. Don't walk <laughs> to get your tickets. It truly is going to be an extraordinary event. Um, I've known Wycliffe now for over 10 years, and not only is he one of the most prolific jazz artist, not, in, not just in the country, but in the world. Jazz artists, the world over, emulate him. He is their idol. He performs regularly with people like Wynton Marcellus, um, Vincent Martino, all, all these great, he's, they, they gravi he's the one they gravitate towards now. It's unbelievable, his, his style is unique, it's unlike any other. He's developed his own jazz way of doing things. And not only that, but he's just a super, super human being. He's one of deep faith and conviction, and he loves St. Gregory's. This is his second home, and he considers you all family. And he's really looking forward. I just did a performance with him uh, just recently, and he is so excited about being here, and he can't wait to see you all. It's been since before COVID that he was here. So uh, he's really excited. He can't wait. And it's sort of a family affair because he is my brother-in-law after all. <laughs> so, um, uh, so come on out. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Not only the concert, but the live and silent auction, the, the the, the dinner afterwards, it's truly going to be an event that will surpass an, any of your expectations uh, for the evening. So you won't be disappointed. Invite your friends, get everybody on board, get a table, bring the community with you. It's going to be an extraordinary event only here at St. Gregory's. You will not have this anywhere else. So, Happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and I'll see each and every one of you this evening at Evensong. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Uh, just a few brief words in addition uh, about the, the uh, gala. Uh, of course, in addition to the concert, we have the dinner, the silent and live auction. It, it's going to be an extraordinary night. 
Um, and if you can't go, and I hope everyone can go, but if you can't go, consider buying a ticket for someone else in the congregation who would like to go. Uh, I make this commitment every year, and I, um, I fulfill it. And I don't want anyone in the congregation not to go uh, to this who wants to go. Uh, so help out in whatever way you can uh, to be supportive of our signature anniversary. It's also, of course, the celebration of our 71st anniversary uh, as, as a congregation. So looking forward to that night. Birthday blessings, anniversary blessings. Who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary that's this week? Yay. Yes, Michael, your birthday's tomorrow, you were saying. Yes, exactly. Shelly's got a birthday. Wonderful. Cassandra's got a birthday. Melissa's got a birthday. Yay. Father Bruno, is it your birthday coming up? Oh, anniversary. Oh, yes. Well, where's your wife? <laughs> Maris, where are you? Are you here? Uh, oh, 53 year Oh, anniversary. Sorry. It's not his wedding anniversary. It's his 53rd year of being ordained a deacon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you, why don't you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a great group. Yay. Wonderful. Let us pray. Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks and prayers for those times and moments in our lives where we're so mindful, so grateful for your abiding care and love. Bless these, your servants, celebrating ordination anniversaries, wedding anniversaries, birthdays. Keep them rooted, grounded, growing thriving in your life and love. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. May our Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace this day, this year, and Always. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out to you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Gregory, and all your saints, 
from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. To you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, who is human and divine, who is of heaven and also of earth, lift up your hearts and lives to God. May Christ make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. May Christ's holy healing enabling spirit be with you every step of the way and be your guide as your road changes and turns. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, within you, and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.